if you already have an idea of a line weaver bird plot, we can use that to look at enzyme inhibition plots in a different way. So before, I used to use Michaelis Minton plots, but since I did mention that line weaver bird plots are relatively easier to interpret, we're gonna convert the Michaelis Minton plots of enzyme inhibition to line weaver bird plots like so. A word of caution. Remember that in the line weaver bird plot, our axes are reciprocals, 1 over V, 1 over S, right? And that's pretty much the same for all of the line weaver bird plots. Now, that is important because remember, if the number at the denominator goes up, the entire number actually goes down. So meaning, we're gonna actually flip the way we interpret our numbers in the line weaver bird. Usually, when we go higher at the y-axis, the number goes up. But since it's a reciprocal version here, as I actually go higher here, the number drops. Similarly, if I go to the right of the x-axis, the positive number line, as I go to the right, the number increases. But this time, as I actually go to the right, the number decreases. Here at the negative portion of the x-axis, also the same. Normally, if I go to the left, the number increases, but this time, as I go to the left, the number decreases. Alternatively, that means that going from left to right at the negative number line here means that the number is increasing. Essentially, everything goes reverse in the line weaver bird plots. But of course, in the Michaelis Menten plots, we are going to use default as I go higher or to the right, the numbers increase. Remember, when we had competitive inhibition, if we look at the red graph here, if we try to trace the plateau here, we're going to get our Vmax final, which is actually the same as the Vmax initial, so the Vmax didn't change, and that means the one-half Vmax does not change, though if I try to get the Km, the Km final actually is higher than the original. For non-competitive, obviously the plateau, this is a very bad flat line, but just imagine it's a plateau. Then I try to trace it here, so this is the new Vmax, the final Vmax. So this is our one half of the final Vmax. And then tracing it down, this is the Km final. So the Km actually, you know, this was uh, the original, this is the new one, it's the same, stayed there. Though the Vmax, in this case, obviously from here, it became this one, so the Vmax went down to a certain extent. And then for the non sorry, for the uncompetitive inhibition, so this is our Vmax final tracing from the plateau of the red line. So it also went down to a certain extent. Then this is one half of the final Vmax, tracing it down. This is my final KM. So from here to here the value of the Km also went down. And I just recapped you on this because this is supposed to be what will be observed in the line weaver bird plots. Otherwise, there's a problem with our plots. It's not consistent. Let me use another color. All right, let's go. So the white line is the original line, the no inhibitor line, which is pretty much the white curve at the Michaelis Minton plot. And the red line is the red curve a while ago here. So let's see what happened. So this one, the yellow one, is the original, you know, Vmax. It's just a reciprocal here. And since the red line intersects at the same intersection, oh, sorry, I was so close to the mic. Sorry. Um, since the uh, uh, red line intersects at the same point as the white line, we can actually say that the Vmax here is the same for the red and the white lines. And then here, for the red line, it intersects here. So this is the new 1 over Km. So this is the final 1 over Km. This is the original. It went here. And remember, as I go from left to right in the negative portion in the line weaver Berg plot, the number increases. So the Km is higher. Is this the same as this one? 
Yes, it is. So this is pretty much the way we convert this into line weaver part. Now let's go to the non-competitive one. So this is the line with the inhibitor. So this is the intersection. So this is 1 over Vmax final. So this is the original uh, Vmax reciprocal. And then we went up. Remember, in the line weaver Burke plot, since you went up, it means the number actually went down. So we think of it as opposite. But the red line intersects at the x-axis at the exact same point. Well, in real life, it's not exact, but just assume it's almost the same point as the white line. So that means the km is pretty much the same. And, uh, well, it's the same thing we have a while ago. And then for the non-competitive one, the red line intersects here at the y-axis. So this is our new 1 over Vmax. And then intersects here. So this is our new 1 over Km. So let's see what happened to the Vmax and the Km. So this is the original Vmax and this is the final Vmax. It went up. So that means the Vmax went down since this is a line weaver bird plot. So we go here. This is the original KM reciprocal. Then we go to the left. This is the final KM reciprocal. Since we go to the left in the number line, this means that the number went down. And uh, it's pretty much the same as this one. Now, just one final shortcut. There is a way for us to quickly, when, well, quickly means hopefully in five seconds or less, uh, say if a plot is a plot with a competitive, non-competitive, or uncompetitive inhibitor. The easiest one is the uncompetitive one because you can clearly see the pattern is straight lines. Uh, sorry, straight lines of lines are straight, of course, parallel lines. They never meet. Okay. But here, since you see that we have a part which is the same, there's always gonna be an intersection in both competitive and non-competitive. Of course, at different points. Since the Km is measured at the x-axis, that means that the intersection, the part where the, the, the kind of middle part of an, a certain x letter is formed, it would be at the horizontal portion. But since in the competitive um, inhibition, the same part is the Vmax, which is situated at the x sorry, y-axis, then that means that your letter x here that's formed would have its middle part at the y-axis. So that is a way to quickly differentiate competitive, non-competitive, and uncompetitive inhibitions using the line weaver perk plot.